So Larry, it's a new year, new expectations. Kind of what, what is, what is the, those expectations coming into this season with, with pretty much the same team? Well, I don't know if we have the same team. We're uh, missing a couple guys, bookends, DeLon and Dallin. Um, you know, it's exciting. It's a, and no, no matter what happens, each season's going to take on a, a life of its own. And we've got some uh, returners, certainly some leadership, and some guys that understand what we're doing. I think as of today, we've got 10 of our 30 practices down before our first game. So we're about a third way, third, th third point. Um, Saturday we did a little scrimmage, um, you know, and it's 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 kind of the dog days really. I took the video home and broke it down, and uh, there basically wasn't a clip that you're watching. That there's not a teaching point because it's it's very rare that your offense and defense are both doing everything perfectly right. So um, an awful lot of teaching taking place, and we've got you know four or five four guys that are new to the system. And, uh, you know, we got to bring those guys along. And then we also, after watching the film, we got to get some of our returning guys on page again. We had uh, a number of mistakes, but it's, it's, that's, what we, uh, that's what it's all about right now is trying to get better. As far as expectations go, um, we don't have any expectations. It's, uh, it's a clean slate. And, you know, we got a little taste of some success last year, but that's not a guarantee that it's happening again. And, we got to, you know, uh, I've said it before, we've got to write a new chapter and, and start getting better on a daily basis. I feel good about where we are, but there's still a tremendous amount of work for us to do, and guys are going to be in some different roles, and, and we've got to find a way to collectively, you know, put it together, put guys in positions where they can be successful and um, eliminate some of these mistakes. Right now it's a... It's what would be expected. It's, there's a lot. There's a lot to be done. I think our guys are interested in that workload. So that's the that's the main thing. Is we've got a lot of willing participants. You know, we're still in that phase of figuring it out. Start. You know, with Lorenzo Bonham um, out front, junior college player, and as is often the case with uh, with JUCO guys, it's you know there's a lot on their plate, accountability and effort and different things. Maybe you could get away with some of those things in JUCO. And he and Gabe. Uh, tremendously talented guys, and I think the quicker we can get them dialed in defensively, the better. But you know, with the with the ball in Lorenzo's hands, he's uh, he's really skilled. He can find a way to put the ball in the basket and distribute uh, quick. Um, so I would say right now, both of those guys' strengths are offense, and and once we get them up to speed defensively, they can they can be contributors and have an impact on the program. Then you look at uh, a couple of freshmen, McCall and Brandon Miller. Um, McCall's been great. You know, he's he's by definition would be considered very raw, but extremely athletic and long. Um, he's probably on the steepest learning curve. Actually, both our freshmen are probably on the steepest learning curve. It's not easy. I can remember when I was a freshman, and it's kind of that rite of passage where you you get yourself up to where you're one of the elite players at the high school level, then you come in here and kind of naturally you're going to, you know, get knocked down a few pegs and have some learning to do. But those guys, um, they're doing well. You know, it's, uh, there's just a lot of mistakes and sometimes it bogs down the machine and, uh, they're, but they're making progress again. They're, they're willing, uh, to get out there and, and make those mistakes. So McCall does some things that are a lot of guys on our team can't in terms of, you know, maybe you make a mistake, but he's got the athleticism where he can get to the rim and block a shot and and make up for it. So um, from a coaching perspective, he's he's kind of a coach's dream in that he's got an awful lot of physical ability, and now we do, it's our job to teach him how to play basketball a little bit better. Chapman's prog progress, and if he's going to have to maybe play, you know, bigger this year because of your lack of size up front like he had last year? Yeah, you know, uh, Burkott's uh, one of the guys I've met with, met with him this morning, and uh, he's been great as far as being vocal and helping some of the younger kids figure some things out. We're, we're big on communication in our program offensively and defensively and, and trying to be connected as much as possible. And it's hard this time of year for guys to be real vocal because most people are kind of caught up in their own internal struggle and the, and the tendency is to maybe withdraw a little bit and keep everything locked in. And I think he and Brandon in particular, maybe a little bit of Jakob, those are guys that are 
uh, are helping that process. But, you know, uh, without doubt, Bricot's, uh he's more of a stretch four man, capable of hitting threes. Um, you know, and he's going to have to play tougher. The rebounding has been maybe an Achilles heel. And if he's going to be at that power forward spot, there's got to be a little more power to his game. And, and that's the challenge for him. But he's, he's tackling it. You know, it's, um, it's rebounding's oftentimes done by committee, and it's a little bit of a mindset. I know he's gotten a lot stronger in the weight room. He hasn't necessarily put on weight, but, um, you know, the weight that he does have now is, is stronger and more powerful. So he's going to, you know, and once he plays the game lower, I think is the big key to use a football term, kind of the line of scrimmage where he's not getting knocked off balance. Um, but that's that's been a focal point for him, and, and it's given us a nice lift. He's... Uh, you know, hopefully poised to have a nice sophomore season. Where would you like to see Reyes take his game this year, next step kind of in his development? Well, you know, it's unfortunate Chris has spent the better part of the last 10 days injured. He's had a back issue, so uh, hard to really evaluate. The conditioning has always been a key for Chris, and he's really tackled that, I think, head on. And our training staff and our weight, weight and conditioning staff have put some extra work in with him so that he's capable of playing harder for longer stretches. Um, but anytime you get into that lower back, you know, some things go, hey, well, he's a tough kid. And I don't know that he's always opened up with the fact that he's injured a little bit. Um, but we need, you know, he's a strong kid. I'd like to think he's he can provide a motor for us where he's playing physical. Uh, there was a number of games last year where he provided that that strength for us in the low post. And then, uh, you know, offensively, we've worked a lot in the off season and up to this point with, with finishing better around the basket. Sometimes he's a, a little bit undersized with some guys and rely more on his power down there with some counter moves and being on balance a little bit better. Um, to give us a little bit of a boost offensively, but I'd like to think of him as an extra possession guy that can that can get in there and collect some rebounds. And maybe it's not about him scoring, but giving us another crack at it. Uh, so that's the thing: get him healthy first off, and then continue to push him when it comes to comes to that motor and giving us a little bit of a of an energy guy.